according to United Nations figures, India uh, lifted 270 million people out of poverty between 2006 and 2017. But of course, in the past year, we've had the pandemic, and the pandemic is threatening those gains. It's jeopardizing those gains. How does the government act now to prevent people sliding back into poverty? So like you said, the pandemic has, of course, changed things quite a bit. But I think in our response to the pandemic, which the government has already been uh, doing a bit of and can do much more, is to look at what is it that happened between 2006 and 17 that helped this reduction in poverty. And some, uh, along with, of course, this being largely a period where there was high economic uh, growth as well, uh, there were certain uh, public programs which helped the poor directly. One of the most successful was what is called the National Rural Employment Guarantee Act, where every household is provided at least 100 days of employment at minimum wages on demand. So any rural household can go up to their local government and say, we can't find any work, so provide us work. And they have to be given that work within 15 days. This not only helped in creating uh, employment locally, uh, putting wages into people's hands, but also the way the program was de uh, designed, the work that people did was to create local assets. So we saw uh, roads being built, say, to connect the village to the main uh, market road, uh, village wells being cleaned and repaired, local uh, small irrigation projects being taken up. All of these also created uh, a, a multiplier effect and the overall productivity went up. So expanding something like the employment guarantee program to urban areas as well, and during uh, this immediate period of the pandemic, expanding it from 100 days to maybe more would be something that uh, we should look at. So overall, it would still be a focus on employment and universal basic services, including uh, food, health, and education, which helped us in the past and which is something that is required now in the context of the pandemic as well. Marcelo Neri, uh, I have another quotation here, and this one is about the impact of the pandemic. This was written by Homi Karas, who is a senior fellow at the Brookings Institution right here in Washington, D.C., and he wrote recently, there is no technological or financial reason to accept the reversals in global poverty being wrought by COVID-19. The damage is due to a lack of political will and international leadership on the issue. You agree with that? I agree completely. Uh, I, I, I know him, and I think this, this was true about 50 years ago, and it's even more true now. The world has resources more than enough to end at least extreme poverty. And, uh, but we have to choose the right technology. You know, I think this is, if we choose a blunt instrument, it will cost much more. You're going to have adverse effects on the economy. So, uh, you know, we have seen here in Brazil, even, you know, Brazil is like the farm of the world in terms of food production, like, you know, uh, China is the, the factory of the world and, or India is the office of the world. Brazil is the farm and we have, you know, uh, if we see food security, food insecurity has grown in, you know, we have a worse situation in 2018, the latest data than we had 2003, because we didn't, you know, take the right, the, uh, the right decisions when we had a, a big recession. We didn't, you know, the, the recession is still today with the poorest people. So I think it's, you know, the world has a lot of resources. If we do just the basic, the obvious thing, you know, the end of the poverty, at least income poverty, which is just the beginning, is at our reach, you know, everywhere. And I think it's very good to be in a program with someone from India, and from China, because we are talking about 40% of the world population, something like that. So we are really talking about attacking at the scale of the problem worldwide.